Hello, welcome to another video. So this is a linearization problem, which simply means you're approximating because what you're doing is not a linear function because this, what you're doing is a quintic kind of function. You're raising something to the power of five. So, but they're asking you to use a straight line to approximate what your answer is gonna be. Now, generally, the idea of lineariz linearization is, you see, from the word linearizing, it means it is not linear, but you're going to make it look as if it's linear so you can find the work easier to do. Okay, let me just give you an example. Let's say I ask you to find the square root of, of 11. Well, you know you'll have to get a calculator or you must have memorized the square root of 11. But one thing you know is the square root of 11 has to be between the square root of 9 and the square root of the next number is 16. But 11 is closer to 9, so you can say, you know what? If I in investigate the square root function where x is equal to 9, I know 11 is just 16 is far away. Um, why can't I just say, okay, here, instead of me using the curve, I'm going to find a tangent line at this point, and then... I'm going to say at 11, instead of me using the, tan the, the square root function, I'm going to use this straight line instead. I know my answer will be slightly above what I'm supposed to get as the actual answer, but it's called approximation. So when you convert a curve into a straight line, you have linearized the curve. So that's the idea here. And what do you need? You just need to know the equation of this straight line and plug in 11. Okay, so find an equation that's a transformation of this and then plug in 11. So the reason why you do linearization is because you already learned how to find the tangent to a curve. Remember in your other differentiation, taking derivatives, find the tangent to a particular function. Now, once you're able to find the tangent, then you're able, the tangent line, then you can evaluate anything. Your errors will be bigger the more you move away. As you can see, the more you go away from 9, which is your linearization point, the bigger the error. You see, the error is smaller here. You even almost don't see it, okay? Sometimes it's so nice that it's so close that it's almost the same thing. And that's the idea here. So the first thing you want to ask yourself is, what function will I be using for linearization? Well, this is something raised to power 5. So in order to start this, just tell yourself, I'm going to choose a function f of x equals x raised to power 5. So the next question you're going to ask yourself is, I need a point. You see, the quintic function is going to look like this something like this, I believe, okay? And your graph is somewhere here, and you're looking for 2.009. Uh, uh, this, this should go through the middle, okay? Something like this. So you're looking for this, but what you know is 2.007, rather. 2.007 is not easy for you to raise to power 5. You can do it multiple times or use a calculator. 2.007 times 2.007, you draw the line. That's a lot. But let's just approximate what the answer is going to be. Now, so this is what you have. And by the way, the answer to this should be something like, um, I think this answer is approximately, let me write it somewhere here. We should get something like, let me box it here. It should be 32.5639, I think. Let's just say 564, okay? 564 should be the calculator answer to this, but want to see what the calculus answer to this is going to be, okay? So... Now, this is what you have. Let's say you are given this function and somebody says, find the equation of the tangent line to this function. You're going to ask a question, at what point? You need a point, okay? Because there's so many tangent lines that can be generated. Here, 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 so many tangents. Our point of interest is the point that is closest to 2.007. Obviously, the closest reasonable um, number that is easy for you to do the calculation with is 2. So 2.007 is very close to 2, so I'm going to say I'm going to, I choose, I choose to linearize, linearize at x equals 2. 
So if you linearize at x equals 2, then the point in the picture will be when x equals 2 and y will be 2 to the fifth, which will be, um, that is, f of 2 is going to be 2 to the 5, and that will be equal to 32. So the point, the point will be the point um, 2, what? 232. Okay, so these are the two important things that you need. So usually when you're asked to find the equation to a tangent line, you're given a point. Now you have decided what the point is. It's going to be the closest point to this that you can deal with. And now you know the point is the point where x is 2 and y is 32, which is true. If x is 2, then x 2 to the power 5 is going to be 32, and that's it. So let's find the equation of the tangent line, which we start by finding the derivative of the function. Okay, so let me clean this up. So now that we have this point chosen, we can just take the derivative. What will be the derivative of this function? We have f prime of x, remember this is the function, is the quintic function, which is now going to be equal to 5x to the fourth. Okay, now we need to know what the slope of the graph is at that point so that when we, um, so we evaluate this, let's just find the slope at the point x equals 2 because that's our point of linearization. So this evaluated at 2 is going to be 5 times 2 to the fourth, which is going to be 5 times 16. What's 5 times 16? That's 80. Okay, so this is our slope. Okay, so now, you know how we normally would say, okay, equation of a straight line, we use the point-slope form, is going to be y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1. Okay, so this is our m. In this case, because we're linearizing, we're not going to call this y, we're just going to call it the linearized version of x. So it's just that. And the, everything else is the same. Okay, but you, you, this y, because it's not actually y, it's a linearized form, so we're going to write this this way, minus y1. What's our y1? It's this point. So this is our y1. So this is y1. This is y. This is x1. Okay, so we're going to plug in these values. Minus 32 will be equal to, what's the slope? 80 into x. <sighs> Stop making errors. Okay, so we're going to have x minus, and what will this be? This is going to be x1, which is 2. So now we just have to take this here, and then you have the linearization of x is going to be 32 uh, plus 80 times x minus 2. I want to take a break here, okay? Because for most people who have the formula memorized, this is what they have memorized. And let me write the memorized formula version of this. I don't have the formula memorized, but I can see it. It says that the linearization of any function is the value of that function evaluated at A, if you're linearizing x, okay, is the value of the function evaluated at A, where A is the point that you've chosen or the point given, plus the slope of the function, which is the derivative of the function evaluated at a, multiplied by x minus a. For most formulas, they put the x minus a on this side. Okay, so let me write it the way it is written. So they put this here and say this is going to be x minus a times the derivative evaluated at a. So this is the reason many students don't really understand what's going on, that it's just the equation of the tangent line. That's it, which is exactly what you have here. Okay, so if you have the formula memorized, then just do these. But if you're not into formula memorizing, you just understand that you need to take the derivative and write the equation of the line using the point you've been given, you're going to end up with the same thing. Okay, so note that this and this are exactly the same thing. Uh, just I just switched these two. Okay, so now I'm going back to solving this problem. Let me put this in a box so in case you want to know what it is. So now the point, so we have the equation. So what is the point? What is exactly the value of x we're trying to evaluate? 
it's a 2.007. So we're going to use this formula now to evaluate this. So the linearization of 2.007 is now going to be 32 plus 80 times 2.007 minus 2. Well, 2.007 minus 2 is going to be 0 0.007. So what we have is 32 plus 80 times 0.007. Well, if you multiply this, you'll find out that it gives you 0 0.56. So this is equal to 32 plus 0 0.56. And that answer is 32.56. This is the linearization of this expression. Now let's compare the answer we got to what the calculator will give you to three decimal places. So we just dropped the four. So look at the error. It means you're making an error after 1,000 attempts. You make four errors. That's how I view percentage error, okay? Or at least error measurement. So it means if we spread these, I've spread this problem in 1,000 places, only four of our calculations will be wrong. <laughs> That's how I see it. That's pretty impressive for this linearization. Well, like I said, your answer will be pretty close to the actual answer if you're close to the point. And I can tell you 2.007 on the number line is very, very close to 2. It depends on how far you zoom in. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.